Connor, I got to ask after a tough physical battle like you guys had in that last game, how is, are you and the offensive line doing health wise as you try and turn around and, and prepare for another one at Oregon? Good. Everybody's good. Everybody's healthy. Obviously, that was a really physical game. So, bumps and bruises. Everyone's sore, but overall, everyone's healthy. Sean and then Kevin. Uh, just looking at, at how the run game progressed for you guys against Baylor, what do you feel like the key going in against Oregon is to kind of opening up the holes and, and maybe getting a few more yards? Because I know Baylor's got a pretty tough run defense. Oregon's also pretty tough on defense. Yeah. Yeah, I think obviously we didn't uh, do as good a job as we could have. Um, in the run game, and that's that's our responsibility as an offensive line. And so I think um, we just need to do a better job um, of starting and sustaining our combo blocks and getting to the second level. Because, like you said, Oregon has a has a great defense. Um, they're fast. They flow. Their linebackers fill hard, and um, so we're, it's going to be another challenge this week to run the football. And so we're going to have to be really consistent. Um, in our technique uh, and make sure that we're on our, our P's and Q's going against a defense like this. Connor, when you look at um, the comparison between Baylor's defense and um, Oregon's defense, is it, is it a similar challenge, do you think, or is it, is it much different for you guys on the offensive line? Um, I think there's both similarities and differences. Uh, you know, both obviously are are really strong defenses, uh, good run defenses, um, and you know they both have good uh, front seven players, uh, and especially because that's obviously on offensive line. That's what we're focused on is uh, who those seven guys in the box are typically, um, and uh, both of those teams play the run really well. Their linebackers flow well and fill and their defensive line does their job in freeing up those linebackers and playing fast. So I think there's both similarities and differences, but both really good defenses, really good teams. Okay, and then Jared. Connor, from an emotional aspect, I mean, everybody saw the field storming, the celebrating, all that. How hard will it be to basically recover from that and find that energy again for another power five opponent? I mean, it's just, it's just business as usual. Um, you know, we love it when the fans get excited, um, especially after a big win like that. Um, but for us, our minds are all on Oregon now and preparing uh, the same way we do every week. I mean, we've been through this before after uh, the Utah game last year. We had a really emotional win, having to regroup and refocus for uh, – Arizona State. So um, I think just making sure that we um, stay focused on our opponent this week and prepare the way we know how um, and know that we're going into a hostile environment to play a really quality team um, and just preparing like we do every week. As long as we do what we're coached to do, um, then I think we'll, we'll be okay and we'll be ready to play. Kind of following up on that, Connor, you want to avoid the poison, of course, but how nice is the res recognition of, of the accomplishments? You've been through this where the team has been, you know, getting some publicity because it's highly ranked and, and highly yeah. touted. That balance of getting the recognition but not, you know, not letting it carry you away, what's the key for that? I think just understanding that, you know, recognition's great and whatever, but the second something goes wrong, everyone's going to turn on you. So... Uh, just know and just staying focused on who um, really matters, and that's really the people in this building, the teammates, the coaches, the staff, focusing on our preparations for Oregon. People outside can say whatever they want to say, and uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't really affect us uh, really at all because it's not, I mean, in reality, uh, it's not the opinion that matters to us. So just staying focused on our opponent and who we're playing because there's, I mean, we we rushed for, I don't know, 83 yards against Baylor, and that's not very good at all. So, I mean, 
we, there's so much to improve upon that it's really not worth it, I think, to listen to the outside noise. Or, I mean, it's, it's wonderful that we're ranked high and we're receiving recognition, but none of that matters if you don't prepare and go and win your next game. So just have to stay focused on your opponent. And like I said before, preparing the way you know how and the way you've been coached, and we should be okay. Hey, go ahead. Yeah, Connor, I wanted to ask you about playing alongside a guy like Clark Barrington. What's it like? It's great uh, to have a veteran and a leader like Clark uh, being next to you, just always knowing what you're going to get from him. Uh, kind of the the chemistry and the camaraderie is, uh, is really nice, and that's kind of how it is across our whole unit. But uh, just knowing that uh, I know that I'm going to have uh, – a really consistent, really strong player next to me, really, on all sides is uh, is really nice, especially as a center when um, I'm getting up, making my calls, trying to get everyone on the same page, knowing that those guys are thinking the same exact things that I'm thinking because they've been here, they're veterans, they know the offense, and, and Clark exemplifies all those things. Is he much of a trash talker? Is anybody really on that offensive line? <laughs> Um, it depends. Not really. We don't really, we don't really trash talk very much. If I'm being honest, it's kind of, we're going to go, we're going to try to run through your face. Then we're going to walk back and get ready for the next play. So we don't really have time to, uh, trash talk. We're more worried about catching our breath. We'll take last question from Sean. Yeah, Connor, I just wanted to go back to, to moving on from obviously that emotional win like you were talking about there. Mm -hmm. uh, but Kalani mentioned um, kind of the cadence of the season, sort of getting in and out of a game and then out of a win, a win or a loss really, and moving on to the next to the next game. Can you kind of walk us through sort of what the, the kind of gap is between when we see you guys in the post game and then Monday morning, how you guys kind of move on? Because you've been through it so many times, obviously, by now. Yeah, it's kind of, um, you know, you kind of take those 12, 24 hours after the game uh, to, you know, enjoy it, enjoy the win. Um, and then, you know, at least for me personally, kind of midday Sunday or so, that's when I'll start diving into who we're playing the next week. Um, and then Monday, we're hitting it hard. Monday, that game's over. Great that we won doesn't matter anymore. We're moving on to our next opponent, new preparation, uh, a new challenge for us. And obviously we have a big one this week in Oregon. So um, usually, uh, you know, you take that day or so to enjoy the win and then uh, get locked in for the next week. Then you put it behind you. It's in the past. Um, there's plenty of mistakes to look through on Monday and correct for your next game.